elephant in the room that we haven't spoken about yet is COVID. Um, it is has completely thrown the entire planet upside down, let alone our little corner of the business uh, and industry. How do you see COVID changing the distribution side of the business? What are the platforms looking for? Is there a lack of content? Um, how is it changing? Well, so far, I don't think there's a, a lack of content simply because films, there were all of these movies going into post as COVID started. So all of those films have been being edited and are now coming out of post and coming to distributors to be uh, put up on platforms. But I think we will start to see uh, a diminished number of films because there hasn't been any new production. So I think by, say, January or February, we're going to start to see uh, fewer films being submitted. Uh, for us, because uh, everyone, e even editors, uh, are stuck at home, you know, so they're editing faster, you know, filmmakers that right. maybe had day jobs, and so they had to edit, you know, at night, uh, are finding that they have more time on their hands and they're, they're editing, you know, quicker than they normally would have. So I, we're seeing a lot of content and a lot of submissions. Our submissions have probably tripled uh, during COVID. So wow. unfortunately, a part of uh, you know, the downside of that is that we've had to become more selective in the films that we take because we can only handle a certain number of films. Um, you know, it's it's very time consuming for us to do the encoding and delivery and QC. So there's only four of us. We have four people in our company. And and so there is a limit to how many we can handle. Uh, the good thing is that that is improving the quality of our catalog. But at the same time, I kind of miss uh, that feeling of being a champion for brand new filmmakers. We always loved that idea that we could work with filmmakers that were having a hard time getting distribution from like bigger companies. But the platforms, so. but the platforms themselves aren't accepting new filmmakers and, and maybe lower quality films that might get been, been in the past given a chance to find an audience now those days are are gone is that correct oh i th i think it's very true and and that's again uh another sad thing for truly new filmmakers uh, because uh they've had so much content coming at them that they've decided that they have to be more selective uh, amazon in particular because they opened the doors to anyone. Anybody that could get their film uploaded went up on Amazon. And uh, they started to get heavily criticized uh, by the public in general that there was a lot of, you it's know, lot. subpar film. There is. And because, you know, and because they want to be considered as good a platform as Netflix or, you know, Google Play, uh, they very seriously decided they, they were going to uh, be more uh, discerning and 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 they didn't really do that at first by not accepting films what they did was they were still taking films but then had to actually compete with all the other films that were on the platform so that's how they came up with this concept of uh, customer engagement rating so all of a sudden they are, you're in a competition with studio films, mm -hmm. if you want to know the truth. So you actually, your film had to prove that it was engaging with an audience somewhere above 50% of all of the other films that were up there, or you were going to make a penny an hour. And because of that, so many films that were actually were making could be making a decent amount of money at 10 cents an hour. You know, if they were making a thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month, that's enough for some filmmakers to live on. But when that turns into two hundred dollars a month, you're not paying your rent for or or twenty five dollars a month <laughs> or twenty five. <laughs> right. But I mean, that, but that particularly that class of indie filmmakers that were able to get a couple thousand dollars a month. It allowed them to do absolutely make movies full time, but you just when it when that's cut down to two hundred dollars or a 
couple hundred bucks, you're you're out of you're out of the competition, so to speak. So, um, so that was the that's the primary way they've been able to, uh, I can I guess knock off, uh, you know, or discourage, you know, uh, subpar, what they consider subpar or non non competing content, and and so I think that was the first way. Secondly. They are. Uh, they started to look at uh, actually purging certain films, and if they found, even if you, even if you had a CER, but they felt that your film wasn't competing, or it wasn't a good enough quality, or they were getting any kind of, you know, uh, complaints from customers, that they would uh, purge it, and without notice, they purge files. So certain files, you know, would just disappear, and they don't send you a notice. They just they're gone. It just says not right, available. right? Because because basically it's their sandbox and it's their it rules, is, sure. and exactly. they do whatever the hell they want, and they can care less about the. Fil- they truly can care less about the filmmaker, and this is something that has happened with every platform that opens up. At first, the doors are wide open. Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. YouTube. Everybody can come in. Everyone can make money. Everyone could do right. everything. And then once they have market share or audience, they start tightening and tightening and tightening and tightening till they all those people that used to be able to get in are no longer invited to the party. Right. And that's what's happening with Amazon and, and also with Netflix, with Tubi, with all of these other companies where they used to be wide open. Is that, is that right. fair? Sure. Absolutely. Um before uh, we used to, we've had we used to put several films up on Netflix and Hulu. And in fact, our own indie film, uh, the third film that we did, uh, delivered, made probably on Hulu the best money that it made while it was, you know, when it first came out, the first couple of years it was out. But uh, and Netflix was the first to do this. Uh, they have decided that they want primarily original content. So if they acquire something, they want exclusivity. And uh, so now uh, Hulu has also adopted that. So for the most part, unless they really, 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 really want your film, um, they, it's going to be exclusive. And, and-, and because they, there's, they pay a flat fee, there's no upside potential. So we don't recommend any indie films do it. Because you're that if you're if you're exclusive with them, you might as well just sell it to them. And in fact, we've actually even said to some people, said, "Oh, I have, to, I really have to be on Netflix." I say, "Okay, you know what? Go go to one of the uh, companies like Bitmax or Quiver that will pitch your film. Pay them to pitch your film to Netflix and see if you get on." Because we're not interested in distributing a film if we can only put it on Netflix. Right, and if like if if basically. Oh. You take on a film and they give you fifty thousand dollars for that film, and that's all you can make off that film for the next two years, or depending yeah. on the term of the, of the length of the, of the agreement. Right. That's not really interesting to you. The, there's no upside. Yeah. You can't go anywhere else. You can't make a deal with right. a foreign distributor to right. you know a buyer you can't do to buy. Else with it. Yeah, you're 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 done. And I've heard they from. They don't need us, and I want to be honest with them about that. Right, so. I- exactly. And from what I'm also hearing from the grapevine, I've heard from multiple producers and multiple multiple producers, distributors, and filmmakers who have been dealing with Netflix is now, and I'm not sure if you've had this experience yet because I'm not sure how much you're dealing with them currently, but now before, like Hulu, when I sold my film to Hulu um, and licensed it to them, it was, a, it was a, I think, a, six, a, a 12-month deal. And it was X, X amount of money, and they would just break that up in quarterly payments during the course of the term. That's right. Now, Netflix is starting the payments at the end of the term. So if you sign a two-year deal, those first two, year, those first two years, you don't get a dime. Oh. That's what I – and I've heard that from – I've seen I've, – I've actually had filmmakers on uh, – or not on, but I've spoken and consulted with filmmakers who've had six – high six-figure offers from, from Netflix, but they're like – yeah, it's a two-year deal exclusive, and they're like, oh, yeah, but we can't pay you for two years. And then at the end of the two years, and then we'll start your payments. And we're like, they just walked away from the deal. Like, sure. they, why, would you, why would you go with a deal like that? Yeah, sure, it's right. Netflix. It's like you know Warner Brothers or Disney, but if there's no money in it, yeah, come on. <laughs> right. I know at, at some point, 
you know, you just have to go. It's, you know, why is it still considered the Holy Grail? And and it just really doesn't need to be anymore. Uh, so I think that, you know, slowly the word is getting out there that mm -hmm. you don't have to be on Netflix to be successful. And that it, that sometimes even if you go with Netflix, that, you know, you're hurting your film rather than, than uh, helping it, that you really could make a lot more. Because we have plenty of films that might have gotten like a $30,000 deal with Netflix, but they've made 300000 in right. the first two years. Right. So, you know, we, 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 our, we see our job as being, you know, uh, to maximize the revenue that you can see from your film so you can keep making more movies. I right. mean, that's, that's the point, you know. Uh, I think there are sometimes exceptions where someone doesn't want to make movies. They just want to be a director for the studios. And so they're more concerned with their reputation. It, right. And, and so there are occasionally, you know, if, some, if that's what they want. Uh, you know, then, but that's not usually um, the films that we get. The films that we get are usually from filmmakers that want to make movies, <laughs> make, movies and, and right? make money. But the right. end goal, but the end goal, that's why I always ask filmmakers when they ask me to consult them on them, like, what's your end goal? Is your end goal to, to get this up on Netflix so your 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 own personal cachet as a director goes up and you can leverage that into getting another gig? Or do you want to make money? And and that's two very different outcomes. And filmmakers have to be honest with themselves about what they – and I know everybody's like, well, I want both. I'm like, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, we all want both. Um, 